that that was the reparation of the of the soul of Noah. Why? Moshe kalul because Moshe included with him within him <clears throat> all the souls of Israel, uh, including the soul of Noah himself. In other words, Noah was reincarnated into and in, in a part a part of the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Here we are <laughs> with um, Parshat Noah. And um, today uh, we're going to look at the commentary of uh, of the Kedushat Levi. Uh, <coughs> to a Rebbe we haven't uh, studied in a while. Some of the questions that the Kedushat Levi asked is about uh, about the verse uh, in Noah. Ki otcha ra'iti tzadik lefanai b'dor hazeh. And, and this is actually a repetition, uh, the same idea of Noach Hayat Tzadik, Tzadik Bedoro. So he asked, uh, so what, what, did, uh, what did Noah do uh, wrong that he was um, uh, limited to uh, being a Tzadik for, only for this generation? And... Um, and he connects, and he's going to connect here uh, uh, Noah with uh, with Moshe Rabbeinu. Parshas Noach, the second parsha of the Torah, uh, a big parsha with a lot of uh, fantastic uh, subject matter, a lot of big things happening. Of course, we have most of the parsha is taken up with the story of the Mabul, the flood, the generation of Noach, Noah, and the flood, uh, which we're going to be speaking about today. And I just, as usual, I just want to put in context this verse, the simple explanation uh, whereby Reb Ruvain just pointed out a little bit of a, 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 a slight uh, difference in the wording of, of the first Pusik, the first verse in the, in the Parsha, and our verse over here, they're slightly different. And the Hasidic interpretation of why we're going to get to in a moment, first, Rashi, had, Rashi brings the Medrash and the Gemara. There's a simple explanation as well. In the first verse, which is spoken of in the third person, Noach was a tzaddik and a tamim. That's what it says. He was righteous and he was wholesome or a complete, completely evolved individual. In our verse, it's God speaking. And God says to Noah, you got to go into the ark. You are a tzaddik. But God does not call Noah a tamim, a, holy, a whole, completed, uh, a completely evolved individual. The question is, of course, why does he leave out tamim? So Rashi explains, based on the Chazal, on our sages, that we learn a lesson in human relationships, a very important lesson, that it's a good practice that we don't praise a person fully in his presence. And so Rashi explains that our sages tell us, don't do that. You can uh, tell some praise of a person in front of him, but don't tell all his praise. That's the simple explanation. Yeah. Of course, the Bidich of a Rebbe now is going to go in a completely different uh, uh, direction, direction over here. And we're going to learn something amazing about the character, the personality of this individual, Noah, in comparison with someone who came later, Moshe, Moses. And without further ado, let's get right into the text. Thank you, Rebelli. So uh, again, uh, for those of you who want to uh, um, uh, look at the text, both in Hebrew and English, um, while you're listening to the shiur, I will um, show us uh, how to um, do that. Uh, you will um, go to our website. It's the Hebrew Learning Circles 
jewishresources.org website and click on Jewish Resources, uh, go down to Pasha Videos, and that's where it is. Click on Pasha Videos, and there is the source sheet uh, available to you. And while we're at it, have you already subscribed to our channel? Please share and like. And without further ado, let's jump right into uh, the text. By the way, the, the Pasuk uh, also that we're uh, looking at, if you want to look it up, it's uh, the chapter Genesis chapter 7, uh, verse 1. And it says, Vayomer Adonai Lenoach, Boata Vechol Beit Chayla Teva. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, God said to Noach, Go into the ark with all of your household. Uh, and, he th- and he explains why. For you alone I found righteous before me in this generation. So the Kedusha of Levi uh, uh, repeats, you know, the, the verse, particularly because I see you as a, as a tzaddik, as a righteous person before me in this generation. Um, it's, uh, it comes to teach us as as the as we learn in the Holy Zohar, the Bei Moshe, about uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, about our uh, teacher Moses, Shamal Macheni Nami Sifricha, who said in another place in the Torah, in Shmot Lamed Bet, Exodus uh, 32, uh, verse 32, Macheni Nami erase me. Please, from from your book. And uh, this is when um, um, I think uh, God is is um, is offering Moshe that um, uh, because the people of Israel sinned, that that God will uh, uh, destroy the people of Israel and start a new people from from Moshe. And Moshe refuses. We're going to begin, he's going to begin to develop a contrast in approach mm-hmm. from Nayach to Moshe. We're going to discover in both, and by the way, I'd like to bring in Avraham Avinu in between them, Abraham as well, because the Zayhar that he's going to quote here really speaks about these three personalities. Noach, Avraham, and then Moshe. Each three faced a situation where God was angry and wanted to destroy people, either in the entire world or specific communities of people. And in each event, the protagonist uh, reacts in a very different way. As we'll see from the Zayar, Nayach, if you're familiar with the story, when he is told that God is going to destroy the world because they've sinned, Nayach's reaction is, uh, okay, fine, whatever. I'm a good guy, so what do I do? Oh, you build a boat. Okay. In other words, he wasn't concerned with the victims with the, with the of, people, yeah. with the other people. Abraham, when he was told that God was angry, was going to destroy the five cities, including Sodom and Gomorrah, mm-hmm. he prayed that God should not do so. He prayed to God, change your mind. But right. eventually, he gave up. He said, okay, my prayers were not answered. Do your, go do your thing. I'm heading out of town. Mm-hmm. Moses says, we're back to our verse. Moses says to God, they sinned by the golden calf. They're, he was going to destroy the people and start again with Moshe. And Moshe says, don't do it. If you do it, do it to me too. Take me out of your book. Erase me. Take me out of the Torah. Don't bother with me. If you're a God that's going to destroy everybody, then I don't want to be part of this. Right. So Moshe, Complete. Moshe is willing. Moshe is willing to give his own life. That's, that's how far it goes. Mesirap nefesh, for mm-hmm. others. Yeah. Even people who maybe deserve punishment. Yeah. And that's going to be the big difference here. Yeah, and that's key to uh, key to the peace. So, um, so he opens up Macheni Nami Sifrecha. And he says, Otiot Macheni, the letters of the word Macheni, Mem, Chet, Nun, Yud, uh, actually can be separated to Mei Noach, Mem, Yud, and Nun, Chet. 
שתיקן נשמת נוח. בסופו של דבר, מי נוח means the waters of נוח, right? The waters of the flood. Right, and just quickly, just quickly to add here, he's bringing in מי נוח, מי נוח, these words are found in this week's Haftarah. The mm-hmm. prophet Isaiah says מי נוח, and our sages say that נוח's behavior was such during this whole entire incident that according to the prophet Isaiah, he hangs the flood on Noyach. He calls them the, the flood of Noyach's flood. Yeah. Chasidus, the Zayar, actually interprets this as meaning that Noyach was partially unbelievable thing because he was a good guy. He was a tzaddik. He was a tamim. Right. But because he didn't try to help people, right. the, the, the flood is hanged upon him, his name. And That's here we're, and here you just said the word Tikkun, because now we're getting into this, the, re, uh, uh, the reincarnation. reincarnation of souls, yeah. and nothing, you know, we're, we're putting down Noyach, but Noyach's Neshama is going to have a Tikkun here. Because right. when, when Moshe says Mecheni, it's yeah. fixing up Mei Noyach. It's the same letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, right? So, so, uh, so Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, when he said that, when he said, uh, um, erase me from your book, he's actually um, fixing or reforming the soul of Noah, who did not uh, uh, plead on behalf of his generation who were sinners. I'm sorry. And uh, and through the fact that Moses has uh, been willing to give up his own life, Bishvil Israel, for the um, uh, on behalf of the people of Israel, he can learn Shamash Noach. That that was the reparation of the of the soul of Noach. Why? Because Moshe. Included with him, within him, all the souls of Israel, uh, including the soul of Noah himself. In other words, Noah was reincarnated into, and in, in a part, a part of the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ve'yadua the Moshe nikrat tzaddik, and as we know, Moshe is called a tzaddik, a righteous person. Why? Shematzdik akol ifnei. Hashem lelamed zchut al akol, because he, as we saw, um, is, is uh, justifies or, or speaks in favor of uh, all uh, before God. Literally to teach merit, but to to talk someone up. If someone exactly. thinks that he's not a good guy, and I'll say, well, you know, but he he gives a lot of charity, and he really is a good father. You know, he right. may not be the most religious guy, so I'm trying to, I'm being a defense attorney. Yeah. Paint them in a, in, a, in a good light. And uh, it is known, the, um, the teaching of our uh, sages uh, of uh, blessed memory. All the prophets, um, when they prophesize, uh, they use the word "cho," and um, which is uh, and thus is Moshe Baze. But Moshe was unique because he also, uh, when he prophesied, said "Baze," and this and such this is. Baze ki otchara iti tzadik lefanai. It says "Kaya Mar Hashem." Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all the great prophets, when they wanted to uh, quote their message from God to the people, they would say, Ko Amar Hashem. God said it, God told me like this, like yeah. this. What do you mean? In other words, they're paraphrasing. They, uh, God came to them in visions, in uh, uh, psychedelic uh, visions, so to speak. And uh, But when Moses quotes God, he says, Zeh, this is what God said. This is what God says. Zeh, direct. Here's the quote. Because as we know, our sages say that all the prophets receive their message through a veil. Right. 
uh, uh, like a, uh, a fogged up mirror, so to speak, a fogged up glass. Moshe received it through a clear glass. He saw directly, face to face, upon him, upon him. So that's why. And now he's going to bring this Pusik. Ki oscha re'isi tzadik. I saw this, this tzadik, meaning not Noach. He's teaching. He's interpreting this verse. Because not that you're going on the ark. I'm saving you because I see that you're a tzaddik in this generation. No, you're, I'm saving you because in the future, I'm going to have eye-to-eye -eye contact and conversations with a particular tzaddik named Moshe. I understood. So, so it's, not, it's not only uh, Noah who's a tzaddik, but he sees uh, how Noah is the tzaddik on the merit of Moshe, who's going to be... I'm be, saving you because yeah. even though you didn't do your job and try and save others, yeah. I see in the future there will be a Moses yeah. who yeah. will yeah. give a, his life up yeah. for yeah. others. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Meaning to say that um, I see I see you as the tzaddik um, for God who will uh, who will be. Uh, um, will be justifying the, um, the, the, the people and, um, and, and, and um, uh, bringing, bringing their merit, highlighting their merits. And my time of Badora is there. Hey, Masai, when? Mm -hmm. um, when will that happen? Yeah, right. Atzalomar, Badora, Sheyebo Moshe. So when he says Badora Zen, in other words, in the Pasuk, it's not the current generation, but that's the generation when uh, Moses will be... Uh, when the person who, when the Zat person yeah. will be around. When the person right. who has direct contact with me. Right, he's qualifying Moses as, as the person, his uniqueness of being the Zat person. Uh, there, there you have it. <laughs> with this, Moshe, Moshe is in... in uh, in the Bechina of Zeh, the category of, of the person has that, that direct uh, connection. As Nishmatcha, Sheyeh Moshe, then your soul, your soul Noach, that will be included in the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Kalul Kolon, the Kalul Kolon Shamod, who includes all of the souls, Yetukan Belimut Chut Yisrael, will be uh, um, reformed uh, through um, through Moses is highlighting the, the, the merit of all of Israel. That your um, soul too will be highlighting the merits. Because um, the soul of Moshe includes all the souls of everybody. And when Moses is highlighting the merits of um, highlighting the merits of Israel. All the souls will highlight the merit. And that's what it means um, when he says, "You are a righteous person before me in this generation." Yeah, this is a heavy a heavy piece. It's it's uh, being taught to us throughout. Uh, the, uh, all the Hasidic texts, it's the same piece, uh, because uh, Hasidism, as we were discussing before we came on camera, is at its root a movement based on, uh, on caring about all people. Right. You know, in, in, the, in Hasidism, Nayach is referred to as, in Yiddish, a tzaddik in pelts meaning a, a righteous person who wears a big fur coat. In other words, if you're cold, you can get warm. You can warm yourself in two ways. I can put on a nice warm coat or I can build a fire. Mm -hmm. If I put on a nice warm coat, I am warming myself, but you stay cold. Mm -hmm. If I build a fire, everybody gets warm. Mm -hmm. So Hasidim used this analogy to teach that there's such beauty, there's such love, there's such wisdom and depth and, and a chance for spiritual growth in the Torah, why not sh share this with others? 
Make it available. But yeah. Make it available. Teach it. Yeah, yeah. Go find someone and tell them tell yeah. them about it. You know, then it, they can do what they want. And Noyach yeah. didn't do that. I just want to say one more thing. There's a beautiful pasuk. It says after the flood, it says vi sha'er ach Noyach, mm -hmm. and Noyach survived. Mm -hmm. But the Ishbitzer, it's funny. We always learn the Ishbitzer, except this week. But I'm going to bring him in. I'm going to bring him in, Rebbe Levin. Yeah, the Ishbitzer absolutely. says a beautiful word, a beautiful thing. He says, V'yishar ach noyach. Even after the flood, he remained, V'yishar ach noyach. He, he stayed noyach, the same noyach from before. He saw mm -hmm. the destruction of the world. Mm -hmm. And he's still the same guy. He doesn't, and he goes out and he gets shicker and he makes problems. Mm -hmm. And he has a downfall. He gets into depression. He stayed the same guy. He would, uh, the Ishbitzer was, and people, the Reb Shlomo Karbach used to bring this Ishbitzer and he used to say, we 80, now it's 80, 70, 80 years. We saw 6 million Jews, Rahman al destroyed. We saw the Holocaust. How do you come out of that and stay the same guy? Before you could stay in your Dalaramas. Mm-hmm. You could stay in your little uh, yeah. stand by your stender yeah. with the Gemara all day, yeah. but now you have to get busy yeah. because everyone, either physically or spiritually or emotionally or mentally, mm -hmm. everybody is suffering. And but we have what to, we have what can help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So bring it. You have to go out. You have to go find and bring. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit, sit and wait for them to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understood. Understood. So that's that's a big takeaway from that and what i like what, what i like what you're saying is that this really um it reminds me that it really summarizes one of the big uh principles of the Baal Shem Tov and the chassidut was uh you know the the love for all jews and also the love for all people and uh the care the care about that so you 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 want to be you want to be connected that was a big uh that was a big revolutionary. That was that was part of the revolution of the Hasidim when when it came online. You know, Baal Shem Tov didn't. He wasn't a Shiva guy. He was really out there, and uh, that's right. And that that was his big challenge. It got that's why he was controversial because the yeah. you know people talk today about the elite, mm -hmm. the power structure, people who run things from behind closed doors and yeah. don't want people to get in that door with them. They want to stay in that door with their buddies and every you yeah. and you stay over there down the way. And they come up with all kinds of takbulot to yeah. figure out how to keep the the working man down. And that's what this was, you know, how you, they were spreading it. He's spreading a message of, you know, you don't have to be necessarily a scholar to be worthy in God's eyes and to be considered a really a tzaddik and a really good person. Yeah. And so the, the elite at that time, the, the, they were like, "Whoa, we don't want that message getting out." That was a, a threat to their That's to their right. power, actually. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And Indeed. so he got into a lot of trouble for that. Yeah. You know, but he had a right. Eventually, these people came around to understand that you know, their the message isn't such a bad yeah, uh, yeah, message yeah. to whatever extent yeah. they're willing to yeah, go yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it took a generation, really. <laughs> yeah, it took about he, uh, three generations, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so beautiful piece. Um, and, uh, yeah, the takeaway is, I think, for me, the takeaway is a reminder. Mm -hmm. But really, the, the you know, the, the way that we're, we're connected and we're... We really need to be, in, in, in some ways, uh, working together and not... Uh, um, I think, like you said before, how people um, they they fortify in their own, uh, you know, their old small worlds. We're talking before about the different uh, sects, and um, yeah, you know, and everybody wants to, to bolster their position as if they're the the only gift, you know, God's only gift to the world, right? And and we need to be more open and. And uh, really, uh, you'll look for the commonality and the in the humanity. So it's a great a great way to start a Wednesday morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I think uh, I think that's uh, where we're going to leave it for today. Uh, uh, please uh, come back next Wednesday, nine o'clock in the morning, and. Um,
for more uh, uh, Parsha and Chassidut, and for now, Shalom. Ahim Rabim Lo Yuklu.